Welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about momentum. And momentum essentially has to do with inertia. If you recall that inertia is a resistance to change of an object. So if you have anything with a mass, anything at all, so a car or a bullet or even air, anything that's massive, it doesn't want to change the direction that it's going. It doesn't want to change the speed that it's going. So if it is stopped, a car wants to stay stopped. To accelerate that car, you have to put a force on it uh, to make it accelerate. If that car is moving, to stop a moving car, you're gonna to have to put a force on it. So a force like a brick wall that it slides into, if it's moving, is gonna cause a lot of damage. We're gonna see that momentum has to do with the inertia of an object in motion. Right, so if you have an object that's in motion, it wants to stay in motion. That object's inertia is based upon its mass. The more mass of an object, the harder it is to catch it. So it's harder to catch a bowling ball than it is to catch a ping pong ball. So to, to, stop, it, to, to stop its motion would be harder the more massive it is. Momentum is just this idea of motion of inertia. So we're gonna look at that today. We're gonna to look at some different um, ideas about it. And you will recognize, I think, that you do this all the time. Continuously, you want, to, you want to change the motion of an object. You're going to have to do some tricks that has to do with momentum. So the mathematical formula of momentum is the mass times the velocity of an object. So a mass that has inertia because it has a mass at times its velocity is going to give you the momentum that we're going to be talking about in a bit. So for instance, if you had two, if you had a car and a truck and they were going the same speed, which would hurt your car the worst if you got into an accident with it? So if a car hits you at five miles an hour, it would do whatever damage that would do. If a truck that was much heavier than the car would hit you at five miles an hour, would it do more damage? Well, absolutely, I'm more scared of a truck than I am of a car. In fact, the reason why everyone wants a big SUV is because if they get into a small wreck, they wanna win. They want to be the biggest in the wreck. They wanna do the most damage on the other guy and have least damage done on them. And that has completely to do with momentum. So mass times velocity is momentum. So what would hurt worse? a truck going five miles an hour or a car going 50 miles an hour? Possibly the car, do you see? Because that car's mass times its velocity is a higher number most likely than a, than a truck times its velocity. It depends on what the weight is. So you're looking at two numbers. You're looking at its velocity and you're looking at its mass multiplied and that product is called momentum. So see if this makes sense to you. A moving boulder has more momentum than a stone rolling at the same speed, okay? Because a boulder weighs more than the stone. So since it has more mass, it will have more momentum at the same speed. A fast boulder has more momentum than a slow boulder. So even though the, the masses are the same, if the speed is higher, you're gonna get a higher momentum. A boulder at rest has no momentum. And that is what you must remember. It is, the momentum is a product of mass times velocity. So even if you have a huge mass, if it's not moving, it has a zero velocity, a million times zero is still zero. So something not moving has no momentum, something that is moving does have a momentum. So for instance, if you were the, the captain of a battleship that weighed a ridiculous number of tons and you wanted to stop it, how fast could you stop it? Okay, if you're driving your car, the, your driver's manual will say, please stay at least four lanes behind the car in front of you, why? Because if you stop, it's going to take a long time, when you, once you put on your brake, it takes a long time for that car to lose its velocity and have a momentum of zero. Okay, it's not gonna change any of its mass, but the velocity will go down to zero and its momentum goes down to zero. And you want enough distance for that to work. 
So if you change your speed, you have changed your momentum. And so what changes velocity? If you want to go from, say, a low speed to a high speed, how do you do that? You have to add force. So, so changing momentum includes a force. If you want, to, if you want a uh, momentum changed, you are going to have to add what is called an impulse. Different word. You've never used it in this, in this idea before. An impulse is a force exerted on an object over a certain amount of time. Now, you may never have thought this before, you may never have seen this idea before, but I promise you've used it a lot, a lot. So for instance, if you're gonna jump off the bed, you don't keep your legs locked, you bend your legs because you want to stop yourself as slowly as you can. If you fall off the horse, you wanna roll so that you will fall as long as possible. If you want to catch a ball, you will, move, you will catch the ball and then move your arm back so that you're catching it as long as possible. Okay? If, some, if a glass falls out of your hand onto the floor, you would rather it fall on a carpet or a pillow than on the, on the tile or the hardwood because it's falling, once it's impacting, it's impacting longer. So the longer it can impact, it will, it will not add as much force as maybe to crack the glass. It's possible that if you were to drop a glass on the carpet, it might not even break. But to drop it on the concrete, it probably would break, okay? So if you do it backwards, let's say you want to increase the velocity of something, say a basketball or baseball, even that's even better. If I wanna throw a baseball, I don't just, um, push my arm a short distance and then release the ball. I want the ball in my hand as long as possible. A coach would call this follow through. So you want the basketball to run off the tops of your fingertips. Why? So that it can stay in your hand as long as you can. You want it to be as long as possible. So if you want to change the velocity, uh, which means you're changing the momentum of that basketball, you're not changing its, its mass, but the mass times velocity is momentum. If you want to change the momentum and get it to be accelerated, then you add a force over a certain amount of time, and the force times time is called impulse, and it is equal to the change in momentum. All right, so FT equals delta MV, okay? Delta MV would be changing momentum. So I wanted to say go from, from stopped to a certain speed, Okay, and I'm not changing the mass of that ball, I have to add a force over a certain amount of time. And the, if I want the biggest force that I can do, then I want to exert it over the longest time. So follow through, there's no sport that you do not have follow through. You wanna keep the bat in contact with the ball as long as you can when you're hitting it. When you're golfing, you want to have the club touch the ball as long as it can. Once it's gone, it's no longer exerting a force, but while it's touching it, it is exerting a force, and the bigger the impulse, the bigger the change in momentum, which means the bigger change in velocity.